feeling retro. Hey, what's up retro lovers? Today we're going about as modern as we dare to go here on Feeling Retro. We'll be taking a close look at an offering from Panasonic that rivaled its competition in almost every way. Such a successful hi-fi that this was a common sight in homes, kitchens, dining rooms, even bedrooms, all through the mid-2000s. It is, of course, Panasonic's SC-PM28 5CD changer micro hi-fi system. This isn't the first micro system we've reviewed here on Feeling Retro, so be sure to check out our other videos of other micro systems, hi-fi stereos, and all things retro. The PM28 was released in 2003 with the intentions of looking striking and modern, which you certainly can't argue with here with its chrome effect and glass front face, sloping side profile, and all round modern and sleek looking front facing user panel. The compact bookshelf speakers that come with this hi-fi stand 10 inches tall, 15 inches deep, and seven inches wide and the bi-amplifying technology means that instead of having the traditional passive crossover, this system uses a two-way active crossover, two amplifiers per side. So that's one for the woofer and one for the tweeter. This gives the system the capability to achieve a great sound. The system does not distort even when the volume is turned to the maximum. So we'll check that out soon when we pop some CDs in the CD changer and get the main unit switched on. As we take a look at the main body of the stereo here, it's quite a thin yet deep design quite significantly narrower than the Sony microsystem that we've seen on the channel previously. PM28 plays CDs, as well as having the capability to play back MP3 and WMA files. Today we'll be using a few of our favourite CDs here. Really, we should try and get some new ones, since there's only so many times I can listen to Staying Alive and these baseline sounds. Let's take a closer look. On the top here, we've got the cassette lid, and next to that, the cassette open button. Moving forwards to the front display, we've got the AC supply indicator here, which tells us that it is plugged in and powered into the mains. Just underneath that, we've got the standby switch to turn the system on and off. You'll have seen then that even whilst in standby, the display did have some lights and effects on it. I used to find that really annoying as a kid when my hi-fi in my room used to light up the full room even once I'd turned it off. Underneath that on the left hand side we've got the AUX button which allows us to switch over if there was an auxiliary device plugged in. And under that we've got a jog wheel here which allows us to flip between albums by clicking it down or clicking it up. Let's get some CDs and put that to the test. First we have to select the CD that we want and we can press CD change and then press CD1. That tells the system that we want to change or put in a CD that's in tray one. And today we're going to go with some bass lines. If we want to add another CD in, we press CD change again and CD two. So as you can see, that was a bit fiddly. It took me a while. Different to a lot of the larger systems where you can open the five CD trays all in one go. And of course then put five CDs in in one go. This was took a little bit longer. It was a bit fiddly having to open it and then select the CD tray that you wanted. Then it was a bit time consuming because you had to wait for it to close fully and read the disc before you could open it again onto a new disc. All in all, not a bad process, but quite time consuming. So you go back to this jog, we should be able to change through the albums. You can use the album jog here to skip through albums, quickly moving you on to the next CD. Underneath that, we've got the CD skip and search buttons to go forwards or backwards. And finally, on the left hand side, we've got the CD check. Aha! And now we get to see which order our CDs are in. Doesn't seem to show you CD1. Let me show you what that looks like over here. And that's a great way of being able to see what CDs you've got in and in what order. As you've just seen, this large silver door here is for the CD changer, which gives a nice flip motion when the trays need to open. Right in the centre here is the very reflective display. And if we move over to the right hand side of the panel, we've got the record and pause button here. Underneath that, we've got another nice jog wheel that allows you to skip tracks. Got quite a nice click to it. You know then that it's gonna respond. Next to that, we've got the super surround equalizer button. Just tell you on the display when that's on and when that's off. And let's give some music a listen. I'll turn that on halfway through and let you make your mind up and see if you think that makes any significant impact to the sound quality. I'm 
not sure that made a significant difference. But again, another cool little feature to have. Under that, we've got the dial for the volume, volume up and volume down. We've got the CD open and close and the CD change button here. And underneath there, a headphone auxiliary jack, allowing you to listen to your music on your headphones, obviously. In the middle here, we've got the nice chunky buttons that have got small little lights behind them. We've got the stop button here, but it's also a program clear button as well. So if you set any recordings up or anything else, that will completely disable. Next to that, we've got the tuner and the bandwidth, which allows us to find the AM or the FM radio station that we're after. The room that we're in right now doesn't get great signal, so we won't be putting that to the test today. Next to that, we've got the tape play and the tape direction button. Next to that, we've got the big CD play and pause button. And underneath, we've got the direct play buttons for the CDs. So we can go straight to CD3 and hit play. And CD2. And when we switch off, we get a nice goodbye message. We've also got the original remote control with us today. A lot of the buttons on the remote control here do exactly the same as the buttons on the main panel of the system. But there are a few extra cool functions here, including the sleep timer button allowing you to listen to your music for a certain amount of time before you wanted to head off to sleep. You've got the repeat button here as well, allowing you to repeat tracks or albums. You can change the clock, the timer. You can also change the RDS display options whilst listening to the radio. And down here, you can also manage some of the sound options, including accessing the preset equalizers, but also the manual equalizer as well. And let's take a really quick look at the back panel of this system too. At the top here of the back panel, we've got the FM indoor antenna port. And just underneath that, we've got the AM loop antenna. Bottom here, we've got the ports for the speaker cables. Each speaker here having four cables, a gray, a blue, a black, and a red. Here, the cords with the white and blue tags are for high frequency. And the cords with red and black tags are for the low frequency. More cables than you'd normally expect on a small system. And again, helping it to produce that great, high quality, high volume sound. Over on the other side, we've got the AC mains lead, and that's it for the very simple, easy to use back panel of this system. Thanks for joining us today to take a close look at Panasonic's bookshelf CD stereo system, the SCPM28. Let us know in the comments section below if this has brought back any great memories for you. Maybe you had one in your bedroom, in your dining room. Maybe you've even still got one now today like us. Remember to like and subscribe, check out our other videos. And if you weren't already, I hope you're feeling retro now.